HMS Royal George. A first-rate ship of a hundred guns and 900 men. One of the finest ship models ever made. Ships like this change the world, fighting for territory and protecting trade. Her three decks are pierced with hinged gun ports, shown here open, ready for action, each decorated with a painted lion's head. On the middle gun deck is the ornately decorated entry port used by the senior officers to access the ship. The rest of the crew would climb the stairs alongside, helped by a knotted grab rope. The circular, dead eyes, attached to the hull by chains, would have secured the ship's rigging but it was common practice in the 18th century to omit rigging on models, as it was both time-consuming and expensive to make in miniature. The painted bulwark screens show mythical sea creatures, foliage, and trophies of war. The large angular beams protruding out from the bow were known as cat heads, which supported the heavy iron anchors. Even the beakhead area of the bow was decorated with carved and painted motifs. The semicircular roundhouses were the toilets for the officers, whilst the crew used the more basic seats of ease shown here. The beakhead bulkhead was fitted with doors between two gun ports. The beautiful and intricate figurehead carved from boxwood depicts the youthful King George III dressed in classical warrior's uniform. The horses' heads even include the pulsating veins running down their noses to the flared nostrils. The quarterdeck and poop deck above the wheel was where the ship was commanded. A ship of this size required a large double wheel, operated by four crew when the weather conditions were bad. Along the edge of the poop deck above the wheel is an inclinometer to show the ship's angle of heel when under sail. The middle of the ship, known as the waist, is where the ship's boats were stored and provided access to the decks and hold below via the hatches. Remarkably, the port side of the hull has been left partially unplanked to show the layout of the frames and internal construction of the decks. Every two frames have been omitted to allow natural light into the model to highlight the many internal fixtures and features. These massive frames were not single pieces of wood but were made of many individual curved pieces held together with wooden tree nails and metal bolts. The large and heavy rudder at the stern was supported by metal hinges known as gudgeons and pintles. Here we can peek inside the model in the senior officer's cabins and see the parquet flooring, inlaid doors, and metal fire hearth. The ornately decorated stern galleries are where the senior officers were accommodated over three decks. The officers even had doors onto a balcony from where they could watch the world sail past. The windows are surrounded by ornate decoration to highlight the importance of this area of the ship. The model makers used bone and pearl to make it gleam. Even though this remarkable model took two years to construct, the actual ship took nine years to build, but was lost in 1782 when it capsized off Spithead with immense loss of life. Around 1,200 died it still remains one of the UK's worst maritime disasters. <laughs>